What's going on guys? VVB be back with a Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we have an unfortunate person that got scammed on a six terabyte plug and play Odroid system. I'm gonna fix it for him, I'm gonna bring it back to life, and we're gonna be talking about this. Honestly, it's it's a piece of crap. Stay tuned. Alright guys, yo, Joe, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. You would have seen everything, all the joy, especially you coming to this old droid. My new beautiful background masterpiece behind me. I I I have the camera set up specifically for that because Anyway, be sure to follow me on all the socials. You would see everything. Basically, luckily with the socials, you're able to contact me just like this customer did. That's what's great with the socials. Honestly, Instagram is probably the best way to message me. Even if you wanna say, hey Vic, what's up, what's going on? Even if it's a regular hey, or if you have questions or about a build you want, or if you're having problems with somebody else's build, yes, I do offer, if I could, I do offer a service where I could fix other people's builds and stuff. I've done that many, many times. That's really how I kind of started uh, as far as like hyperspin stuff and trying to learn it better. Uh, I mean, again, I don't even know how long I've been doing this. Talking at least maybe what, 10 years? Not going full time, but arcade wise, probably even more. I mean, I did it in the college days. My birthday was two days ago and I'm 33 now. <laughs> so it's it's been a while. I've been around emulation. This one though, I'll be honest, this is new to me. Uh, this is supposed to be the Raspberry Pi killer. I don't know. There's so much going on in this Odroid thing. Again, you know how I do it. I always talk a lot. So we're gonna talk about a little bit of a background. The customer hitting me up on Instagram. What this is, I'm going to show you the company because I don't give a shit about the company. I'm not promoting them. It's more about a heads up for you if you do see this company and you see, oh, plug and play, stay away from this shit. Just please. I'm gonna again, I'm gonna show you everything. We're gonna talk about the company. I even reached out to the company, the customer reached out to the company. On my end, they're not even replying to me. We'll just go over the basics. Let's start with first, what is this and how the customer contacted me. So again, customer messaged me on Instagram, on a DM. Again, that's very quick. I'm always quick on that. So he hit me up, he goes, hey Vic, man, I have a question for you. I have an Odroid XU4. It's something like a Raspberry Pi, but I can't get it to work properly since I purchased it a couple of months ago. So right off the bat when I see that, I'm like, okay, I don't know what an Odroid is. I, I've, I've read or seen it a little bit. Uh, again, it's supposed to be the Raspberry Pi killer. Um, basically he goes, it came with a six terabyte drive, which I can't get to work. I would like to know if you could help me get this thing up and running. Uh, if I could, I'll send it to you. Please help me. You are my last chance because no one else seems to know how to fix this. Thanks again. So again, it's a very big paragraph in the beginning. So right off the bat, I got this message and I'm like, I don't know anything about Odroid. If I've seen it, it's mostly like, you know, a Raspberry Pi where you download an image, most likely from Arcade Punks, which I, I think that's what happened in this situation. Again, it's basically a Linux based system. I had no idea about this. And I said to him, I said, I've never worked on this. I've never heard of an old droid. Um, I asked him, you know, what the website is. He didn't tell me the exact website where he purchased it from. Cause I wanted to see what he bought. That's the easiest thing. Don't beat around the bush. Just send me, Hey Vic man, this is the website I bought it from. This way it could read and such. Uh, late, later on though, he did tell me the website. Uh, I basically did a Google search for Odroid 6 terabyte build and one website um, has it. Just going casual back and forth, he goes, if you can figure it out, please get back to me. I'm desperate. This is what it looks like. I'm sorry I even purchased it. Um, it works, it cuts on, games don't load or I can't play any games. I press buttons on the controller and nothing happens. I asked him to put a keyboard in. He said nothing happens, nothing works. Some particular systems, uh, the games load, but you can't actually play or start, which I did experience. Like I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go through the whole thing on this. Anyway, he sends it out to me, I get it, and I go, listen man, just give me a couple of days. I, you know, this right now is brand new to me, so I have to kind of sit, 
do some research and all that. He actually has two SD cards on it. This is also another reason why I want to make this video. He's got two SD cards. He has one that's 32 gigs with the six terabyte drive. And then he has one that is just 512 gigs, no external drive for it. Now, I didn't look totally at this website. The one that I clicked on, it obviously had it said that 32 gigs plus six terabyte drive. It didn't have anything about a 512. So I'm a, I would assume he bought this off the website. Again, we're gonna do a screen grab and we'll see exactly this website and all that. This way you could also see this website and avoid it at all costs. Cause again, uh, it's kind of funny in the Facebook group that I'm in, uh, I sent them the, the links and I was like, oh, you know, just me doing casual banter and uh, retro lizard Joel. He's like, oh man, it looks like for me to sell arcades, I just have to have cute girls like this holding controllers. And I'm like, well, that's what this company did. And it, I guess it worked, <laughs> but again, enough of that. Basically I said, I, there's no image of a 512. Maybe there is, I have to dig into the website, but uh, it's just kind of sad, you know, not to mention the amount of money that this costed. Um, customer didn't tell me how much it costed, but again, when I did a Google search, I saw it and I was like, holy, I did the whole Auga eyes. You're looking at $525. And that was only for the 32 terabytes with the six terabytes, not the 512. $525. The person got it and had it for a couple of months and it has been a paper weight. This is the biggest thing that I just, you know, I feel bad for the customer. He's not the only one because there's other people in the world. You know, honestly, they probably play it for like a day. It sits on a shelf and then when you want to play it after a couple of months, it's broken. And then you know what? People just toss it. And listen, $525 is a lot of money. That is, that's a lot of money. Not to mention I feel bad in his situation because for $500, I don't have any that is $500, but my solution, my suggestion I should say, is I would get an old Dell Optiplex refurbished for like, I don't know, what are they now, 250, 300 bucks? Grab a hard drive, but yes, you now have to make it work. Even just that is way better than this piece of crap. I can't figure it out. It looks like it's got an N64 case. This is just, it's its crazy. I, again, I feel so bad for the customer and I feel really bad because there's other people in the world. The one thing I always laugh, I always snicker and I feel bad, even, I get this a lot. Like I said, I've been doing this many times. I don't mind fixing other people's mistakes. I always get it where it's like, Vic, man, I'm sorry, dude, I bought this before I even knew you. I wish I bought it from you. I'm like, listen, dude, it's okay. I'm, I, don't, I don't care about that. I'm the type of person where I wanna at least offer you the support. And when he was messaging me, he's like, Vic, man, you just taking on the challenge is more than I could ever ask for because I'm asking other people. They don't even want to touch it. The company isn't even replying to him. That's what's also sad. There's a lot to it. There's, there's just so much to it. Now, I got this thing in the mail. Basically, the first thing I did, I booted up. I, I went in and I booted up. The first thing I did boot up because it was inside already was the 32 gig image. So again, it's an SD card. You can see this. It's pretty cool, this N64 thing. Not to mention this does have also an LCD screen here, almost like your active marquee. When you get into a game, it shows you it. Depending on where you put this, you may never see it. Not to mention the screen is small, so you're not really gonna see it. I'm not really a fan of this case because you, if you don't put the SD card in in a good angle, it will just fall in the case. And now you're kind of screwed. As you can see, I opened the case because it happened to me. Uh, anyway. I had the 32 gig, so I put the 32 gig in and then I also plugged in the hard drive, okay? I'm gonna show you a snippet later on with my discovery, but this is the original hard drive that it came with. I plugged this in, put it on, I gave it power, and basically on this hard drive, it is a Seagate six terabyte. The, f the white light here was just flashing. And sure enough, like after like a minute, the screen booted, the system booted, and it didn't have much on the menu. It only had like one thing or two things, which is like the PC games and uh, what else? Some open bore and like options. And I'm like, you know, this again is me. As if you, if, as if I bought this, let's say you're the customer, you've got this in your hands. That's what you see. And you're like, what the hell is, you know, you only see two options on the menu. It's kind of mind boggling, right? So I'm going back and forth. I'm testing this for like, I don't know, 20 minutes and I'm plugging it in and I'm unplugging it. I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna now take this out and I'm gonna put the 512 gig card in. Sure enough, 512 gig booted and I have a whole menu. 
I mean, I could see everything. I got Super Nintendo, I got NES, I got Sega Genesis, I got Mame Arcade, awesome. I'm like, okay, cool. So at least I could see that. Basically then the other thing that made me really laugh is that the controller comes with is this submarine controller. <laughs> it's not actually the real submarine controller, uh, but it is a Logitech controller. It does have a USB dongle for it. And um, that's, there goes the pin with all the flashing. <laughs> but um, it's a Logitech controller. It is not Bluetooth, it's not Wi-Fi. The also thing that's crazy is that this does need AA batteries. Um, it kind of just shows the age of the controller. He only has one controller though. So that was one thing that I didn't, I didn't even ask about, but it came with one controller. So anyway, I booted up, the controller worked, I'm able to navigate the menu. I go in, let's play some MAME arcade, I wanna play some Street Fighter. I load into MAME and then I am stuck. I am a frozen, I'm a duck. I can't, I can't move it, I'm stuck. So I'm there and I'm like, I'm trying to press select, I'm trying to press everything, nothing works. I can't even exit the emulation I was like, screw it, this right here off the bat, we're looking at a RetroArch issue. Basically the controller was not set up in RetroArch. I went in, got my keyboard, pressed F1, I did my whole thing. I even went into the options, I should say that. Really how I started, I, I pulled the plug, replugged it, went back, there's an options for RetroArch, and then I assigned the controller. The controller then worked for MAME. Then I went into Super Nintendo, and it didn't work. Long story short, I had to go into each emulator, each system I should say, and I had to configure the controls. Maybe there is an easier way, I don't know, I can't stand RetroArch on my PC builds. I don't use RetroArch on my PC builds, I use you know individual stuff. So if I'm gonna use like for example, uh, Super Nintendo, I use the BSNES or BNES emulator and such. So basically like I said, I set up RetroArch, then I had to go into each system, you know, me, personally, I, I was able to do it on the fly, but that is time. That's also another thing to just kind of elaborate on. It takes time to do all that, especially when you have like 30 systems. You gotta sit there and do the same thing 30 times. So I did that, I got excited, I got happy for him, I sent him a video. I'm like, dude, look, the 512, I got it working. Your controller works, you're able to game on. But for some reason, I don't know what's wrong with this 32 terabyte, uh, 32 gig, image with the six terabyte drive. I said, give me, give me a couple of days. At least I got the 512. So I like doing that where I messaged him and he was kind of at, at ease and he's like, okay, at least I have something to play with. I said, yes, at least we got that up and running. Where are you okay? Let me do some research on this thing as far as the six terabyte drive. Let me give you this whole story about the six terabyte drive thing now. It's kind of funny. I have to actually kind of cut in. Uh, this was done, this cut, I'm gonna cut in. I don't know exactly when, but there's gonna be a cut of me discovering something about this drive. Anyway, this drive, like I said, I tried it, I unplugged it, I plugged it in. Not to mention this Odroid system, it takes like, wait until you see the six terabyte one. The 512 gig one, it takes like a minute or two. This one, like this 32 gig one, it took like four minutes. And you know, you just gotta wait. You gotta literally twiddle your thumbs. You're just seeing this flashing, I'm like, I now I gotta wait for this to see if it loaded. I basically did it like five times. And then I said to myself, I said, wait a minute, this is a hard drive. Let me plug this into my PC. It should just read, it's a USB, let me plug it in. Sure enough, I put it on my test bench, I plug it in, I get absolutely nothing. Not even a Windows chime. You know when you plug it in, it goes bloom. I didn't get nothing, so I'm like, maybe the drive is dead, maybe the, you know, it, and you, you know, you could physically feel if it's spinning, nothing's happening. So I said to myself, and I messaged the dude, I said, listen, I don't know what it is, but my computer's not even recognizing it. Then I took a step and I'm like, wait, maybe because it's Odroid, it's like a Raspberry Pi, and it's not gonna recognize Windows, but then I'm like, wait a minute, my Raspberry Pi builds, if I put the micro SD card in the computer, it's gonna ask me to format the disk. So I'm like, this should do that. Again, I've never experienced this Odroid crap. So he said, me as a person that's done emulation, has done this, I, you know, compared to, not you, the person here, but there's some people like this customer that doesn't know anything about this and really doesn't know anything about computers, you know, they don't really know to, hey, let me try to plug it into a PC. Anyway, I got so frustrated, I didn't get anything on it. I actually opened this. I said, screw it, this thing is dead. I'm gonna open up the housing. It's a regular hard drive. Let me plug it into my computer directly, hardwired, direct connect with the Molex connector and all that. Sure enough, I got life. I said, oh shit. 
me plugging it directly into the computer, it worked. And then sure enough, I could see it. The drive is labeled Odroid XU4. And then inside of it, I could see the files. I see there like a, a notepad. It says like Pi, Pi stuff or Pi image and then boot. And I was able to see the games and the systems. And I was like, okay, at least my computer is able to read it when I connect it to the Molex. Took it out, I put it back in the enclosure, I got nothing. I messaged the customer, I said, hey dude, I don't know what it is, maybe there's something wrong with the drive. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna get a six terabyte drive. I'm able to put it on my computer, I'll just transfer over the files. And what's kind of funny in this situation was when I actually put it in my computer like the second time, when I removed it again from here, it actually shorted out my computer. Now, what do I mean by shorted out? No, my computer didn't explode, it didn't break. It's just, I every time I do a drive thing, I turn off my computer, I, I fully disconnect it, I plug in the hard drive, and then sure enough, I'm trying to press power, I got nothing. I'm like, oh shit, this thing might have just fried my, my computer. I remove it, my computer boots. I turn it off, I try it again, my computer doesn't boot. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Sure enough, I didn't take a video of this, but the actual pins, to the Molex, one of them was actually touching. I mean, again, you gotta figure it's a flat board with like, you know, I don't know, let's say 15 little metal pins sticking up. One of them was actually touching together and I noticed it, I took a flathead screwdriver and then I moved it. And sure enough, it worked. I went to Micro Center, I got a six terabyte drive and then I transferred over everything. Once now I have this new drive, I go to take the new drive and I plug it into the Odroid. All of a sudden, I'm having the same exact issue. I can't get anything out of it. Sure enough, I'm going back and forth, and now I'm gonna put in this kind of discovery. So I right now have this in my hands as if it was in the enclosure. I basically just, I decased it. It's very simple. So now, I'm using everything that came with this package. So I do have the USB running into the PC. So I'm gonna plug that in. And once I give it power, again, using the stock power supply I came with, I should hear a Windows chime. So three, two, one. No Windows chime, I have my Windows on. This right now is not spinning. So I have nothing right now. So I also thought to myself, I said, maybe the customer got power supplies mixed up. Um, came with these two power supplies. One of them is very long and then one of them is, is very short. So even if I give this second power supply a connection, nothing, dead, okay? Now, yes, I'm shooting this right now. Uh, I basically took the contents on this and then transferred it over to a my book. But now look at what I just discovered on this, okay? If I take the power supply from the MyBook, which again, I'm gonna look at all the numbers in a second. Watch this. We have a Windows chime. I feel it spinning. And we have the old droid. So now, now it might be just a power supply issue. Um, a lot going on in my mind right now. Literally, I just discovered that. Uh, I just plugged it in, but I'm using the MyBook power supply. So as I look at the MyBook, it's outputting 12 volts at 1.5 amps. This big one here is outputting five volts, so this ain't gonna work. And this is outputting five volts. Well, there's your issue. I'm gonna have to let the customer know he might have gotten his power supplies mixed up. It was not enough power to run this Western Digital. I let this run overnight. I went and got a new MyBook for him. I'm not upset. I'm kind of, ups I'm just surprised that I discovered this just now. Um, Okay, uh, I guess this does work. He just doesn't have the right power supply. Um, well, <laughs> but in all honesty, this is a big advantage to the customer. This will save him money. I went to Micro Center, uh, and as you can see here, uh, it was on sale. It's 125 bucks for this. So I am now gonna message the customer and say, hey bro, 
You don't have your power supplies right. <laughs> Man, that, I'm literally discovering this like live. My face right now, it is pure reaction. Um, yeah. So luckily me with all these power supplies I have in the garage, I went and I looked for a power supply. I'm just upset at myself because I didn't realize it. Uh, so many emotions going through my mind because I even bought this. Uh, I bought this kind of hard drive docking station off of Amazon and the drive wouldn't read from this. But now I remember that I was using the power supply that came with the Seagate. So this probably does work. I didn't, I, I purposely didn't like unwrap it totally because in case I have to return it, I could just return it. But now it's just, my mind's going crazy. So now basically I went into the garage. I found a power supply that I had laying around. I'll most likely give it to him. But basically now again, the hard drive is back inside of the original Seagate. I'm gonna give it power. I'm gonna plug in the power. I should say the USB. We do have a Windows chime. I have a steady light and Windows recognizes it. Wow. The customer's gonna be happy because I guess, you know, we're saving them 100 and after tax, it was like 145. Saving them 145 bucks. I have to just go out now and return it. I'll go to Micro Center, that's okay. I'm not complaining about that, but. Damn, I'm waiting for him to reply now because I'm saying to him, hey, you sent me two power supplies with five volts. That's our issue. Uh, we still have stuff to talk about with this Odroid thing though. Um, so yeah, let's, let's talk about that now. I shot that video before this is being filmed about maybe, I don't know, five days ago. So I kind of forgot. Not to mention that was when I was unboxing my pinball machine. Um, so let me reiterate what happened. Basically, I'm using the power cord that came with this system, and as I look carefully, they are two five volt power bricks. I messaged the customer, I said, hey dude, I just noticed that you have two five volt bricks. The hard drive, the external needs a 12 volt. He goes, Vic man, that is what the company sent me. So I don't know if that's exactly true, but he said that's what the company sent me. So. I, I don't I don't know what to I don't know what to say now. So it's like you know this company now it's, it's sent you the wrong power. Obviously, it wasn't enough power to move this. So sure enough, like I said, what I mentioned before, the new drive I bought from Micro Center, I was still using the original plug from this. That's why it didn't boot. And I'm like going back and forth. And I remember when I when I when I I realized it worked, I was like, oh shit, it's got the wrong power supply. Let me make let me make sure I use the Western Digital one. And sure enough, now. I got this thing working for him. This is the standard drive. This is the stock drive that it came with. I had a bunch of power supplies in the garage. I'm giving him a 12 volt power supply. I messaged him, I said, hey dude, it turns out you have the wrong power supply. I went, I returned the hard drive from Micro Center because I'm the type of person where I'm not gonna rip you off. I'm not gonna go out. That, the, the hard drive I got from Micro Center was on sale, it was like 125 bucks. And I'm not gonna rip you off. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I already went. I don't work that way. That's my objective for this customer was to give you the cheapest option, the cheapest fix. I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't. That's like karma. I don't like ripping people off. So I didn't mind it. I wasted a little bit of gas. I went to the micro center. Gas is gas. What are you gonna do? You have to drive. So I'm just happy. The guy was happy. I was like, oh, you know, I'm just saying, you know, like we're saving now 125 bucks. You don't have to worry about the hard drive now because now it works. Now, all in all, yes, this system from the company did work. And in all honesty, with the six terabyte side, majority of the stuff was configured. Majority of it was plug and play. Uh, big issue was like games and consoles that would utilize like the extra joysticks. You could see here like the thumbsticks. For example, like PS1 and N64, those were not configured correctly. So basically I tried to launch GoldenEye and uh, I couldn't aim because the stick wasn't assigned. So it was probably plug and play 50%. If you're gonna play like your retro consoles, majority of it was okay. Uh, I think Super Nintendo had like the buttons flipped. Again, my main thing, at least we got it working. It was just kind of crazy that the company sent out, if they did, again, going by what the customer said, if they sent him a five full power supply on it, not to mention the two power supplies that I have, there's no like, it's like no name brand stuff. And not to mention the cords of them are so short. It's like a two foot cord. Like, look at this. Well, what do you do with this? And this one, I, this one I have set to the Oldroid. 
It's a no name brand. Look, look at how short this is. I, what do you do with that? Now the other 5.0 cord, this one came with the Seagate. And now that I look at it carefully, this is, the, this is long. Granted, this is long. Again, looking at it, this has an output of 5 volts. I mean, this is a big ass power brick for 5 volts. Um, but again, no name brand to it. So I'm like, usually like if you get a Seagate, it usually gives you like a Seagated branded plug. Like Seagate should be on the plug. So again, I'm going by what the customer said. This is what he, he said. This is what they sent. So if, the, if this company sent two 5 volt power supplies, that's crazy. Now, let me talk about what the customer said when he actually messaged the company. The customer actually sent this whole unit back to the company saying, hey, it doesn't work. The company sent it back to him saying, hey, it works. And that was it. My guess is they probably did what I did where they basically have some plugs pre-put in their wall so they didn't actually use or test his actual plugs. In my situation, I tested his actual plugs. But as far as these sellers, they probably just have a 12 volt in there and they're like, okay, this is my quick test bench. I'll plug this in and then it worked. So again, there's so many like red flags up in the air. I'm talking so much and this is unfortunately how it is to many people. It's not just with this one person. I get these requests a lot. Now, all in all, with all this bickering and stuff, the system works. My big thing, and that's what I can't wait to show you, I'm gonna show you each system. Wait until you see what is on the six terabyte drive. I'm gonna make your life easier if you don't wanna watch the entire video. This right here has everything you could probably want that this system can power on, which is up to PS1 slash PSP. Adding six terabytes, it added so much junk, filler, crap that you will never play in your life. It is so crazy that this drive right here has nothing of value. Again, if you see my personal builds with Hyperspin and my kind of drive that I talk about, I do no BS, no filler, main system, main bangers. Me, again, I'm 33 years old now. I've had my share of gaming. NES, Super Nintendo, the, you know, the main consoles. That's how I make my drives. This is full of crap. I, the, the definition of shit is in this drive. Again, you could get this 512 and you'll be set. The extra six terabytes that's in this is a fucking joke. And it is just garbage filler now again from learning from my video people are like i want i want to play texas instruments i want to okay so you do that but not many people want to play texas instruments and this piece of shit has that again if you like the garbage filler feel free and fill your drives up with all that crap i'm just so upset i feel so bad the amount of money that this person spent you hear the word six terabytes and you think oh i got everything in the world Wait until you see this shit. That's all right. So without further ado, let's look. all right. So without further ado, let's look at the 512 gig SD card image. I have my Elgato screen grab on, so we're gonna take an actual screen grab. I'm gonna basically just put this in post where I have my face and all that. So three, two, one, bang. I'm plugged in. My Elgato is gonna change the signal. Good. So. There's a couple of things also I forgot to mention. For example, number one, I told the customer, I said, hey, you only have one controller, bro. Do you want to add another one? I then went out and I got a second controller. I'll talk about that later on. But right now, while I talk, we're going to see how long it takes. I want to see. i got to lower that. I'm trying to see right now if my L got, okay, so it missed it, but it did say virtual man. Uh, on the intro. I think my screen grab missed it, but that's a-okay. It said virtual man on it um, What was I going with that? I don't want to cut this because I want this to just keep going You get this annoying intro video some of them are like a minute and some of them are like two or three minutes and it is what it is And I have to sit and wait the big thing that we're gonna look at in this We're gonna first see number one the systems that's like the main thing to see it. Also just to kind of show the customer that it does work. But going back to what I was saying, I did also grab for the customer an extra controller. He did ask me to try to find this exact controller. 
If you look up this controller on eBay, number one, it's old. Number two, it's expensive as hell. I think it's because of this whole submarine gate. But this right here is the Logitech Wireless Gamepad F710. Go, while this is loading up, go take a look at how much this controller is. Granted, honestly, yes, the company that with this, they probably have like a thousand of these and they bought them five years ago. Uh, but yeah, this controller is there. So now as you can see like on the N64 box here, look at my cord is long enough. You can see like the display is there. So I'm in emulation station and we're able to navigate. In all honesty, I have not compared side by side the you know 512 versus the six terabyte one. Let's go through the game list and you're gonna see what happens with the six terabyte. So we have Dreamcast, PS1, PSP, PSP Minis, Atomus Wave, Naomi, Neo Geo, Arcade, N64, Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, NES, this system. I don't have to say each one, Sega Saturn, Sega CD, 32X. I don't wanna waste your time just by talking, but again, this has main systems. Again, I'm gonna go nice and easy. This way you can see it on the screen. I'm making sure my screen grab is getting it. You do have the handhelds. I was very shocked to see the DS on this, the Nintendo DS. So that was pretty cool. Again, the Pi doesn't do that, but this does. Uh, Vectrex, and we now have a bunch of um, like category genres. You know, this is all the Super Mario, this is all the Metal Slug. So these are categories. These are not systems, they're just kind of categories where you can find all the games in it. It's a collection, I should say. And end of list. Now, again, I would compare this to like my Pi 3 image, which I have. My, my Pi image, I haven't gone past the 3B+. I'm not looking at a Pi 4. I tell people, because a lot of people expect from the Pi 4 to play PS2 and PS3, and I just facepalm so and hard. Uh, no, it's just a hard no. So I'm not even looking at Pi's. This right here, I will never look at an image here. Uh, but again, I'm using the submarine thing here, the submarine controller. If I go to like arcade classics, there's a lot. I don't like this menu, uh, these big white lettering. I, I can't change the theme. I don't know that much about it. I can't even tell how many games are here. Uh, but if I do press the back button, I could jump to. So basically if I go, let's say for some Super Street Fighter, I'll go. I, I always like Street Fighter, but I do Super Street Fighter because it's closer to the T and it's just faster for video. So if I do Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, pressing a button to enter, it's gonna boot. I have not played each individual game, but it does boot. Uh, when I take the six terabyte one, I was looking at a couple of specific games that I usually get. This person does have the bezels on it, as you can see. If I press the back button, let's wait for this to load. Oh shit, I exited like an idiot. Damn it. <laughs> we'll bring it back. I exited, sorry. <laughs> Again, the back and the select, uh, back and start, I should say, it is your exit. Uh, back button is hotkey. So for this customer, I set up retro arc like I normally set up retro arc on all my other builds. So it's like you hold the hotkey and then L1 is to load, R1 is to save. Uh, so let's let this go. We should be able to put some coins in. Yes, we're good. So I'm able to push coins in. He couldn't do this before. He basically had the attract mode and because the controls wasn't set, he wasn't able to do it. So we do have player one. If I turn on, and again, these controls, I'll talk about the controller in a second. I gotta press this mode button to turn it on. And if I press the select key, press start, I now have two players. So he did not have two players before, but now he's got it. Real quick while this loads up, I'm gonna play a game, but while this loads up, I did try, I have my personal uh, controllers that I use, which is the PS3 style controllers. Um, I did try to put that to this and I couldn't get it to work. Basically, those are like connected via Bluetooth. This thing does have Bluetooth, but for some reason it would not connect to my PS3 style controllers. I had to find them a controller like, like this one, where basically in the front there is a dongle. So it's a USB dongle. That's what it is. So again, as you can see actually with this active marquee BS, you don't even see the Street Fighter logo. It's just the category that we're in, which is arcade classics. Uh, again, anyway, this works. And again, I had to spend, no joke, you're looking at at least about an hour to an hour and a half, and I'm not exaggerating it. I have to go, I have to go into N64, and I have to launch and, and just make sure it works. Not to mention, I did that, then we went to six terabytes, so I did this controller, then I had to add a second controller, so I had to do it again, 
uh, unfortunately. But listen, that's just part of it. That's what I want to do. I'm going to load up GoldenEye. I know the 6 terabyte version, GoldenEye 2 player did not work correctly. It was like a graphic issue. Uh, but just to show you real quick, this, uh, this, is the, this is what I usually get, the PS3 style controller. Uh, this is what I use like on my Pi builds. This is connected via Bluetooth and I couldn't get it to connect with this. So let's just get this, we don't want the music too loud. Again, on the six terabyte one, I'll talk about the six terabyte one as we go. So right now, as you can see, I'm able to move the stick. Let's do some multiplayer. I'm gonna do some two player multiplayer. And again, like I said, the six terabyte one had a graphic issue. I didn't try. Yeah, so we even have this. So as you can see, yeah, that's not the, El the Elgato glitching out. That right now is what player two sees. There's your N64 uh, two player GoldenEye. Um, yeah, again, I don't play these games fully. I don't like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't do it like that. As you can see though, it's not that great. So I'm gonna hit the select and the start, and then I am back. I did make a couple of notes for him because for some reason, there's a couple of things that would not stick. So I'm gonna read my notes real quick off of this. Now again, I literally send this to the customers. I do this for everybody, it's not just him. So number one, the Dreamcast. Some of the games, I can't tell what it is, but I think the, the systems that start with S, but then again, Sega 32 was okay. For example, the Dreamcast, I can't exit. I can't exit the emulator, you need a keyboard. And yes, and that's where I'm gonna go into another one. For example, PS1, second player doesn't work, and I couldn't save the configuration. So like PS1, it was using, um, it uses RetroArch. And what I do is that I go in, I configure the controls, and then I go in and I do save current config. Every time I press save current config, it would fail. It literally says on the bottom left, fail to save current config. There's no way around it. I don't know why. Another one we have is the Atomus Wave. Same thing, no two player, I can't exit. Naomi, Neo Geo system, Sega Saturn, I wrote there avoid, can't exit and no keyboard support. You have to unplug and reboot the unit. So that's the, it's a small handful, but you know, Dreamcast, PS1, a Thomas Wave, Naomi, Neo Geo System, Sega Saturn. The Neo Geo System I thought would have just been MAME, um, but it's not. So again, if I launch this right now and I don't have the keyboard plugged in, if I do the Neo Geo, can I do it? Uh, I'm gonna try it. Worst case, I'm just gonna edit here. So if you see a quick edit, that means it didn't work. But let's launch 2020 Super Baseball. My main thing to see is if I could show you to go into the, um, I wanna go into uh, the RetroArch menu, uh, basically. So as you can see, you can see the little lettering there. So you can see that. I wanna see if I could, I, I'm trying to activate the menu basically. So hold on, <laughs> bear with me while this picks a bunch of shit. And no, I can't. So right now, I can't exit. I can't do anything right now. My objective was to show you that it actually says failed. So you don't think I'm an idiot. It just says failed. So unfortunately, I, I'm i stuck. So like this customer, if he plays Neo Geo, you, you can't do anything. You literally have to come here and pull the plug. Now I'm gonna do it again, unfortunately. I'm gonna plug it in. We're still working with the 512 here. I don't think my Elgato is gonna get that quick second. But again, it did show Virtual Man. Let's see if it gets it on this one. Do, 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 do. Again, the 512, the main thing I want to get out of this is that as you see the system list there, it's pretty good. Meaning you have your main retro bangers and you do have some filler. Like there was some, I don't know, that SX2000 or whatever it is. Again, you know, it's to me, those are filler systems. The one thing I do want to do real quick is load up. Um, number one biggest request I get as far as arcade stuff, people want to know if a Raspberry Pi or this, if you're watching this, can it play Killer Instinct? That's like a big game to play. So this didn't show any Virtual Man thing. We got some Retro Pie video going on. So I'm gonna see number one, if this has Killer Instinct, I'm gonna see if it does launch. Spoiler alert, the six terabyte one does have Killer Instinct. It does not work. It doesn't even load. It just brings you back home. So again, 
more shit on this system. Again, I don't want to cut too much. I was just reading like a text. I don't want to cut too much. You know, basically want to show you and wait until you see the boot time on the six terabyte one. It is, I believe I clocked it in at no joke, nine minutes for that. Um, what was I going to do? Let's go real quick to the arcade. Let's go to main, which I think I passed. But like, for example, let's say like this is SG 1000. Nobody's going to play that. Super graphics, the turbo graphics, some people you might, the CD-ROM, I don't know, PC Engine, eh, this, Intellivision, Coleco, there are people, I get people, especially on my video, like, I like the Intellivision, oh, what are you talking about, alright, go, you go play it, uh, Game & Watch, again, I was shocked to see the Nintendo DS, and basically I have it set to the thumbs, the thumbstick moves the stylus, uh, but again, this here, like, for example, these three here, Amiga, Commodore, and MSX, you need a keyboard, uh, so there's that. Uh, I didn't test those games. They booted. This Sharp X68. This is like filler. That to me, I would never play that. I don't play any of those. I play the main stuff like the Retro Classic. So again, this 512 satisfies it. But you're going to get people that want PS1 and PS2, uh, PS2 PS3 on this. You're not going to get it. Uh, okay, here we go. So Arcade Classics. We're going to go into this. Let's go to K. We're going to see if we can do Killer Instinct real quick. That's like always number one is Killer Instinct. That's the, the, the fan favorite. And as you can see, no, we have Killer Comet. We do not have Killer Instinct. On the six terabyte version, there's an extra menu under Final Burn Alpha. Um, so yeah, that is it. Oh, I forgot to plug in my keyboard to show you the failed um, script thing. Uh, let me just see actually real quick, hold on. I don't want to waste time on the video for RetroArch, but let me just show you if I could see the button um, assignment, I guess you could say. So if I go to settings, if I go to input, we go to hotkey. See, like my menu toggle is button three. That's fine. So usually again, I go here and I press save current config. You can see the yellow wording. It says there, save new config. Those systems I mentioned before, it says failed. There's nothing I could do. I'm not going to go and put this SD card in the computer and I don't do that because this system is working. You just have to deal with that, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Uh, again, Naomi, let's see real quick because Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is usually big. Um, we'll load it up. Let's see how it plays with that. That's always, again, Killer Instinct and MVC2. Those are the number one things. But again, right now I loaded this up. It is not going to, I can't do two players because I can't save the configuration, unfortunately. Uh, Naomi again can't exit and no two players so we're gonna let this run we'll see how the game plays and then from there we're gonna switch over to the six terabyte drop so we got Naomi great while that works can I I'm gonna try to at least I'm trying to basically bring up the menu that's what I'm trying to do right now and I can't I would need the keyboard to press F1 again normally like on Super Nintendo I hold the back and then I have it set to the Y button where you could bring up the RetroArch menu uh, but unfortunately with this, I can't. I'm gonna take it for a ride. I can't hear the audio, but you guys can because I have the screen grab. Let's do cable. I'm gonna try to do people that have like, you know, that eat up like graphics. Let's do Venom. And uh, we'll do Magneto. Gonna take it for a ride. See, like the other big thing, playing a game like this on a controller, I just, I, I'm not a fan. <laughs> Like I, I would never, I can't really hit supers on this. I just, I just kind of button mash the hell out of it. Uh, but in all honesty with this, again, I've only played like for about 30 seconds. It seemed good. It doesn't have like any like pixelation. And again, they do have the bezels on this. So I got a super off. It's good. I mean, right now, again, I'm not seeing any like, uh, you know, stuttering. But again, unfortunately you just don't have, you don't have killer instinct. So let's try to do another super. He's blocking me. Strider and Hulk is probably the best duo as far as opponent to face in the first round because it's kind of easy. Playing them on like later rounds, it's tough. But yes, as you can see, it is good to go. And it's playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2 fairly well. Honestly, it's fairly well. Is it $525 well? No. 
Uh, no, absolutely not. I would rather you get a Dell Optiplex and add to that arsenal. You could play, you know, Mortal Kombat 11 on medium graphics, depending on how hardware you, you modify the Dell. But again, for 512 gig, uh, 512, 520 bucks, this is a hard pass. But yeah, again, I cannot exit. I can't do anything here. We are stuck. Normally in this situation, I would treat this like a pie. You really don't want to just unplug it, but I'm a sitting duck. I, unfortunately, it's just going to go. So bye-bye. Let's load up the six terabyte and get ready for this long wait time. All right, so unfortunately you can't really see it. I have everything plugged in again. My 12 volt power supply to the hard drive. I even have ready a stop clock. I might just fast forward and probably talk a little bit just to get some you know, stuff off my mind. But you're gonna see how long it is. You might even see me go play a quick game of pinball while this thing boots up. So, without further ado, we got the 32 gig in. We have the six terabyte plugged in and ready to go. Three, two, one, plugged in and started now. I have a little bit of an extra couple of seconds that I'm missing, but not extra seconds. Let's, I'm gonna leave it like that. Um, while this boots, you can see it in the background and all that. Again, it's just sad. It's very unfortunate. The worst thing is that I really got upset with the company itself. Um, you know, the website even states two year warranty. He's only had this for a couple of months. He messaged them and said, hey, listen, the best we could do is give you 15% off on your next purchase. That's just God awful. Not to mention again, who knows if this company actually made these images. It's just so, it's just heartbreaking. It is awful. I feel really bad for the customer. These right now, right now, this is a hot take. I can't edit this because I don't want, I don't want to, you know, cut in between. But, you know, hot take speaking, it's sad. I, I feel really bad. And people, unfortunately, do buy it. This right now, you see the screen, the screen right here? This is going to sit. For no joke, probably another seven to eight minutes. Again, when I first powered on the hard drive, I'm like, maybe this doesn't work. Maybe, the, like, sure enough, like I went, I went to no joke, I went to eat lunch, and I came back, and sure enough, I heard it. Not to mention, there's music in the background, and there is a way to turn off the music because I just can't stand music in the background. But there's music. I most likely have it muted now. But we are no joke. I'm gonna try to aim to not cut. We're gonna let this timer go. Um, again, it just, I feel bad. You know, the worst thing that really irks me is that this person spent $525. And then meanwhile, I get customers and it's not just me. I get the same thing with, you know, my buddies, you know, for example, Joel, Retro Lizard. You know, he gets these people that are like, oh, you're expensive. And then like you get people that will just freely pay $525 for a paperweight. Uh, that's just what would I don't want to say the word annoys me. It's just you know It annoys me again. I'm not gonna tell you how to use your money. You could use me. I don't care um, I just feel bad. I feel bad. It makes also the people You know, it, it makes everything look bad. It looks it makes like me not me personally But it makes people like me just look bad, you know people now they're, they're gonna be like oh, you know I see you offer plug-and-play arcades and is it really plug-and-play like uh, for me, yes, just like what I did with this customer, I sat down, I made sure every system launched. I never, I didn't launch every game. I made sure every system launched and I made sure that the controls worked. For example, that 512 gig image, I made sure, I, I go to N64 and I launch like four games. If it launches, great, I make sure that the controllers are good and all that, but as you can see, like Goldeneye, he might play multiplayer and it doesn't work. You can't really blame me for that, I, that this isn't my stuff. At least we got the game working. The controls work. As far as, hey Vic, this game doesn't work, that's not my problem, that's not on me. Same thing also keep in mind, I do wanna say this too, is that even if you got a PC-based system, some games may not work. For example, I always say for uh, PS3, Xbox 360, the Switch, you have to go into the compatibility list and make sure the actual game launches. So if the game doesn't work period on the emulator i can't make it work it's not it's not a me issue it's just an emulator issue um what else i said i'm trying not to cut because we are right now already three minutes and 30 seconds in and it's still booting the big thing again we want to make out of this we want to see out of this is number one we look at the system list and again and no joke that drive 
it has 5.5 terabytes used. Um, so it's missing 500 gigs. Uh, it's 500 gigs empty. Uh, yeah, that, just keep that in mind. <laughs> I want to do this and not, I don't want to cut. I want to go play a, a game of pinball, but I don't want to cut. It's, I don't know. I'm done with these Linux-based systems. Um, you know, somebody even looked, said to me, hey, Vic, you should look at Batasara. I'm not looking at that. You might as well get a PC-based system. The, the, you know, you might spend a little more. Yes, there's more configuring, but the P, like, for example, like in this case, if you bought a Dell Optiplex, I mentioned like Mortal Kombat 11 and somebody's gonna be like, I can't play Mortal Kombat 11 on that. If you have like a decent GPU, you may be able to do it. You might not be able to play it in 4K 60 frames. You might have to drop it down to maybe 720p, but it actually is playable. It will play it. Uh, you know, not to mention you could play other PC games such as like TMNT Shredder's Revenge. You could play that on Potato, but you need a PC-based system for that. You can't get TMNT on this. Oh, I could get it on Batasara. Why, why, why go through that extent? Again, I have not experienced Batasara. For me, I could go to my sites, I could download the games, and then I could just put it on Windows and, you know, put it into Hyperspin. That's what I could do. You got Big Box. Uh, Big Box should be easy to add games. I just don't understand why people, I don't like these Linux-based systems. Oh, it's portable, Vic. It's compact. It's small. Look at it. Yeah, awesome. Great. Uh, but it doesn't fucking work. <laughs> uh, unless you make the image for it, then yes. Be my guest. Go right on ahead. But the worst thing I said, I feel really bad for the customer. You know, he was telling me, he even messaged me because I messaged him about, hey, the second controller. And he didn't get back to me. And I'm not, I'm not the type to, hey, you know, did you read my text? I don't do that. Like, after like, I just let you reply. I figured you're a busy guy. So he told me it was working, but he's also very frustrated uh, that the company didn't want to help him. The company didn't want to send out a new drive. And it sucks, especially for a company that's advertising two year warranties. Oh, the best we'll do is that we're going to give you a uh, 15%. We are at six minutes. I know right now me, I would have, I would have been like, this is broken. This froze, but I, you know, I don't hear it, but you could hear it. the music. There's music. I could see the, the, my OBS studio going and I'm like, wait, it didn't freeze. So I can hear the music. This is the longest nine minutes of life, especially imagine you have a bunch of friends and it's like, oh man, let's go, let's play some street fighter. Okay. Hold on. Let me plug this in, but we have to wait 10 minutes for it to boot. This is the worst experience ever. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a spoiled brat, but this is bad. And again, it's $525. Like, I'm just trying to think of other stuff to talk about with you guys. <laughs> again, we will later on, we'll, we're gonna do an actual screen grab. We'll go to the website. Uh, I'm basically gonna put the website on like the thumbnail and just be with a big X and just avoid this company. Um, I feel like I went over everything at least. I got the second controller in. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> I don't want to, no joke, we're at seven minutes and we are still waiting to play. I already could tell this video is going to be like 45 minutes long, but I don't really want to cut. Uh, I may cut though, but I don't want to cut because I just want to, this is reality. This isn't like, uh, you know, maybe part of me now is like maybe the Seagate is taking long. Again, when I, when the Seagate didn't work, it took like two minutes and then it only gave me a couple of menu options. Whereas now this is going to boot and it's going to show you the whole entire list. So yes, I'm getting more systems, but wait until you see all the systems on this. It is, it's insane. I, 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 it, I, and, and also note on their website, you do see all this filler crap systems. Uh, so again, I don't even think that, I think the company says how many games, I don't really know. Uh, like I said, I, I just took a quick skim through. Once you see like two videos and it's just like a like a, 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 an AI girl holding a controller, like do you already know that it's just bad news <laughs> coming up. We are right now, again, eight minutes and 30 seconds in and we are not playing a game. Again, it's, this is it. This is the waiting game. I, I just, I really wonder if somebody would want a refund this. Like, what would happen if you wanted to return it? The company probably would say no, <laughs> it works. 
Oh, here we go. All right, awesome. 847. Not to mention, give or take a couple of milliseconds, I didn't press start. Eight minutes and 49 minutes. It took nine minutes. No joke, my camera died. <laughs> so, jump in. Without further ado, let us first take a look at the system list on us. Again, remember, six terabytes. So, here we go. We got the 3DO, Amiga, Amiga CD, CPC. I don't even want to. I don't even want to say the systems because I'm just already out of breath. But let's just let's just keep going, okay? Again, six terabytes. And now it looks like the 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 collections, as you can say, Capcom. This is basically in alphabetical order, whereas the 512 it basically had the systems and then the collections at the end of it. Uh, Final Burn Alpha, Disc, Fujitsu, Game Gear. Mario, Mega Drive, MSX. <sighs> yep, this is it. This is what six terabytes looks like so far. Sega SC3000. I mean, it's a big list. So we like be like, look, look at all. Oh. <laughs> There's your Texas Instruments. That's not even the calculator one, that's an actual keyboard one. Virtual Boy, X1, Sharp, ZX. And that right there, my friends, is your six terabytes. This, it, 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 it pisses me off. We're gonna go right now, I'm gonna put it up above 512, and then this one here, we're gonna go down. This is the definition of bullshit filler. A lot of these systems, not to mention, need a keyboard. And it's just, it's just so crazy that <laughs> this is six terabytes. And as you can see, compared to the 512, this six extra terabytes, let's call it really, it's five terabytes, 5.5 terabytes extra. It is pure shit. It is pure crap. You didn't, I didn't gain anything with this. Absolutely nothing. Probably in all honesty, the Final Burn Alpha was probably the only advantage if it works. But other than that, the 512 gig SD card has what this has. It's, it's mind blowing to me. It is insane. Now, some of you might be like, Vic, wait a minute. Wait, there's PC games. Go there, go, go to PC games. Maybe they have Mortal Kombat 11. Maybe, where the fuck is it? <laughs> here we go, PC games, right? Let's go into this. Let's see here, start DOS box. So yes, you do have PC games, but this is DOS box. This is 1990, 1992. This is, not, this, you're not gonna find Shredder's Revenge on this for sure. This is DOS Box. You'll probably find um, uh, Doom. You'll probably find Doom on this, Carmageddon. Again, somebody might have seen the PC games list on the website, like, oh, this has PC games. You are playing DOS Box. You most likely will need a keyboard for this. You got Doom 2. You got a couple of Doom 2s. We got Doom Ultimate, Doomsday. The worst is when there's no preview. I haven't loaded these up. I haven't tested these. Once I saw DOSBox, I'm gonna, I already told the customer you're gonna need a keyboard for it. You got an original Grand Theft Auto. You got another GTA. It's just more wasted, wasted space. Awful. It's insane. I grew up playing a game called Super Solvers Gizmos and Gadgets. Loved that game as a kid. You do have SimCity 2000. Does it have my super solvers? T U no. It doesn't. So it doesn't have all the DOS box. It does have the Oregon Trail though. Old school Oregon Trail. But yes, there you go. Open bore. Again, as you can see, the 5.5 terabytes gave you absolutely nothing. You will not play any of these. PS1, cool, awesome. Insane. It's just it's so crazy. It is insane. Now, real quick, let's load up Final Burn Alpha, Killer Instinct. Because again, on my side, every customer, Vic, does it play Killer Instinct? 
Let's go see. So you do have Killer Instinct here and then Killer Instinct too. So we're going to load up Killer Instinct and let us see if it loads. Again, my camera died. I was already doing a little bit and I was talking and I discovered the camera died. So right now you can see there is a little bit of a loading video. I'm not touching anything. I don't want to be accused of a fake person and a, a scammer. Uh, but you're going to see right now, we got that animation. It was like the TV closed off. I don't hear anything, but it looks like from my OBS music. Oh, we're back to the menu. Can it play Killer Instinct 2? It didn't play Killer Instinct 1. Will it play Killer Instinct 2? Let us find out. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work. Oh man, it's just, I feel, I feel so bad. And what really gets me pissed is the price tag. And no joke, 5.5 terabytes of pure crap. Vic, I'm gonna, I, you, it's not crap, Vic. I'm gonna play my Fuji 2 FM7. Go, fucking go. <laughs> go and enjoy it. Go make sure you have a keyboard, but damn it. Nothing, absolutely nothing of value here. It's, it's so upsetting. It is so sad. Now again, the six terabyte drive has these extra menus. If I remove the six terabytes, I'm only going to get like the PC and the op open bore and like options. That's it. So it, you need the six terabytes to get at least the artwork or even get the menu options. But like, what is this E machine? Z machine? This looks like this, like the novel based. You need a keyboard. Now, real quick, just for kicks, I know it's not gonna be there, but let's just see. Like, what is this? I guess these are um, categories. So if I go into Sega, it's just, it hurts the eye. That was my pinball machine. <laughs> my pinball machine saying, hey, come play over here. All right. <laughs> Real quick, let's go see if we could see some Killer Instinct. Is Killer Instinct on this? Again, it's in Final Burn. No, Killer Comet. That's it. Now again, I do have the two players on this, so I did configure the controls on this. This one though, honestly, was a little bit easier to set up the controls for two player. Um, I basically had to go in and set it as default um do i have any notes on this i should do that real quick let me see the only note i have for the six terabyte is i wrote it literally takes nine minutes to boot that is what i told the customer so real quick let's just go let's just go for kicks to to goldeneye again and let's see and then i'm also gonna run uh i'm gonna run another game that i couldn't exit before uh, we'll see like if Neo Geo works and such. So let's just see the kiddo just woke up. So she might come down. That's okay. But let's see right now. So again, I'm running right now. N64 golden eye. We got that. Bam, bam. I'm going to have to mute that. That's okay. So actually, no, it looks like I'm going to have. Oh, it looks like the same issue. I'm sorry, we're doing this live. I can't save this. Uh, the override on this, look at this. If I press it, look, can you read that? Error saving overrides. I have to actually make a note of that. N64, oh, this is what I was gonna tell the customer basically. Get rid of this fucking six terabyte 32 gig SD card. It is a waste of time. As you can see, that is like the thing right there. You can see the error saving overrides. I can't, I couldn't do anything. I can't do anything. I have to now exit. I have to quit RetroArch somehow from here. And I, I hope I can. There you go. Th there you go. Yes, that is what I'm gonna tell the customer. Thank you with this crap system. I'm gonna basically tell them that you have no advantage with this. Um, I couldn't save any of them. I can't save anything. Uh, even if I go into options retroarch, I, I can't, as you can see, I can't save it. Like I said before, the 32 gig image, I had to go into each system. I had to go into retroarch, I had to configure the control and then save current config. And as you can see there, that is one example of I cannot save. PSP, 
Again, you have this on the 512. All in all, this six terabytes is just, it's just poor, it's just awful. No point, let's just, for kicks. Now, also just real quick so he knows, you should press start and then you should quit and then shut down the system. I don't know if this is like a pie where if you keep unplugging it and don't properly shut down, it might turn into a brick. But I am done with this. This is over. Just for shits and giggles, uh, we could load up. I'm going to load up some Texas Instruments. I don't even know if it's going to load. Let's see. I'm going to play some amazing. Again, one button. I, it's got this animation. I, I hate these loading animations. Because sometimes the game is already loaded. And I'm comparing it to PC stuff. Sometimes the game might have already loaded. Uh, if this works, cool. If not... Nothing. Because you need a keyboard. That is it. I'm done with this. Six terabytes. Look at this. The Retro Arena. Garbage. Let's take a look at this website. Alright guys, so we're doing the screen grab to see the website here. Again, if I just did what I did with the customer, I just googled six terabyte Odroid. And you can see the first thing that pops up is this Hyperspin 140 Systems six terabytes so this is the website he told me later on it was bought from this hyperspinsystems.com again i would avoid this at all costs so as you can see here there's one price of 340 but this doesn't include a gamepad but the gamepad one as you can see there's 525 uh and there you go there's the the girl holding a controller as you can see the two videos i mentioned earlier and there the big thing is this so check this out look at this so even on the Seagate, they offer apparently two year warranty, but unfortunately in the customer situation, they didn't do anything about it. Again, just look at the, look at this website. <laughs> look at it, <laughs> it's insane. And as you can see that, yes, you do have the game list. You do have the game list here and uh, yeah, nothing at all. It looks like a shitload of filler. It is insane. All right, so real quick, I went into the product page on this website and I unfortunately don't see a 512 gig Odroid image, but if I do scroll down, there is an option here for a HyperPi 512. Look at this, $215. That is just the micro SD card alone. I guarantee you that is a red, that's an arcade punks image. So unbelievable. If you add a Raspberry Pi, it's 370. This though, again, doesn't say anything about Odroid, but as you can see, just like my buddy Joel said, look, look, what is going on in this video preview here? Very, I would just avoid, I would avoid this at all costs. So again, I don't know if he got the 512 from this website, but as you can see, we do have that six terabyte Odroid setup XU4. Just avoid this at all costs, please. Just don't give these people your money. I don't understand why people do it, but as you can see, Awful, awful, awful stuff. Well, there you guys have it. In conclusion, unfortunately, another person getting scammed out of a six terabyte build. And as you can see, it is just pure garbage on six terabytes. No, you will never see me make an Odroid build. I have zero interest in this thing. The main thing, the positive note that came out of this, honestly, is it, I got it working. I'm gonna let the customer know, don't even bother with the six terabyte image. The 512 is definitely plenty. And as you saw in the video, the extra six terabytes is just pure garbage. Not to mention, for example, N64, I couldn't even assign you know, the, um, the control stick. I don't even think I have PS uh, Player 2 on it. I basically said, since the 512 is good to go and ready, I th the six terabyte is a waste of time. Don't even bother with it, but again, there you have it, Vic VP Game Case Arcades. Please, please, I don't even know. Just don't buy this crap, please.